In this video, we will be covering the velocity insert row functionality. When examining the right-click menu in the velocity user template, one will notice that the insert option is unavailable. This is deliberate as there may be instances where users shouldn't be allowed to add new rows. Therefore, the insert function has been disabled. Velocity offers this capability through the boardwalk menus. In the previous video, we learned about modifying velocity menu items. Let's examine the options available for insert rows. As we know, the selected options that are visible have a check mark against them and are highlighted in blue. The ones for insert row are unchecked. The first option, insert row at cursor, will insert a single blank row wherever the cursor is positioned. The second option, insert row at top, will insert a single blank row at the top of the cuboid data in the sheet, so the new row becomes the first row. The third option, insert row at bottom, will insert a single blank row at the bottom of the cuboid data in the sheet, so the new row becomes the last row. It is important to understand that the insert row function expands the data range of the cuboid when a row is inserted to accommodate this new row. Velocity provides the option to add multiple rows as well. Each of these options functions similarly to the insert row functionality, with the distinction that a pop-up appears during insertion, prompting the user to specify the number of rows they wish to add. Valid values for the number of rows range from 1 to 500, inclusive. If we choose to enable the option to add a single or multiple rows at the cursor, here's how they will appear in the right-click menu for the row. When you add a row or multiple rows, the default behavior is to insert a blank row. However, Velocity offers additional capabilities to configure this behavior. The Insert Row Behavior Configuration establishes the way Insert Row option will behave. To get to these options in the design framework is to select Advance, then Edit Row Behavior, and followed by Insert Row Behavior. Let's explore the configuration options available to us. The Insert Row Defaults will add default values to the columns that you want. To activate this configuration, we will select Insert Defaults. On the pop-up requesting confirmation for Insert Row Behavior, click Yes to confirm. Click OK on the next informational pop-up. Now click on Enable Insert Row Behavior from the Insert Row Defaults menu. Click Yes on the pop-up to confirm enabling Insert Row Behavior. Click OK on the informational pop-up. Next, try to insert a row and observe what happens. Notice, the values in the newly inserted row matches the values in first data row. This is because Velocity is using the values that were saved in insert row format for our transactions data. Let us navigate to the format to verify this. Select row format transaction insert row from the name box. This highlights the insert row format for transaction data in the row format tab. Notice, these are the same values that were inserted in our row. Let's clear these values. We notice the sheet is protected. Let's unprotect the sheet by selecting Unprotect All Sheets from the Utilities menu. Now that the sheets are unprotected, let's clear the contents of the insert row. and let us leave the TXN type value, assuming all transactions will be wire transactions and clear all other values. Let's go back to our transactions data tab and test our insert row functionality with default values. Notice, only the TXN type has values in it. We have successfully configured insert row with default values. Similarly, we can configure Velocity to insert formulas when a row is inserted. To do that, navigate to Insert Formulas by clicking on Advanced and then on Edit Row Behavior. Only formulas that are in the Insert Row format for the cuboid will be included when a row is inserted. Since we had already enabled the Insert Row Behavior, that step is not needed. If there is a requirement to include defaults and formulas with Insert Row, then you should select Insert Defaults and Formulas. If there is a requirement to revert to inserting a blank row, then select Insert Blank Row 
from the same menu. Like you enabled insert row behavior, you can disable insert row behavior too. The show insert row behavior settings will bring up pop-up indicating if the settings are enabled or not. The insert row defaults is another way to define the defaults when inserting rows. This provides you with an opportunity to specify the values you want to assign. The specified values will override the ones that are in the insert row format. These defaults are defined as field name and value pair, separated by an equal to sign. If there are multiple values that need to be defined, the pairs of field name and value need to be separated by a pipe symbol. Click on OK to continue. A pop-up indicating successful assignment shows up. Click OK to continue. Next, we need to enable insert row defaults. A confirmation pop-up appears. Click Yes to confirm. A pop-up appears indicating that row defaults are enabled. Click OK to continue. To review the default values configured, select the Show Default Insert Values. If you would like to remove the default values configured, select the Delete Default Insert Values. To disable the configured values, select Disable Default Insert Values. To check the status of the configured values, select Show Insert Row Default Status. The next options that we would like to cover are the ones listed under Insert Row Format. The option Show Insert Row Format setting will display row format being used in a pop-up. The option Enable Row Format does exactly what it says. To disable Insert Row Format, use this option. To navigate to the Insert Row Format, you can use this option too. And then we navigate back to our transaction sheet. In this video, we learned about the different Insert Row options and how to configure them. We also covered the different options available to configure the behavior of an inserted row. And we also learned how to unprotect worksheets. The ability to unprotect the worksheets is only available with the design framework, i.e., the end users will not be able to unprotect the sheets. Next, we will focus on configuring copy row functionality.